Stairway to Freedom, Chapter 9 The Beginning of Spirituality It has always been supposed that man has had a relationship with earth. That is to say, that it has been supposed that the creature that we call man either evolved from the ape family or was created from the dust of the earth according to whether you tend towards Darwin's theories or the Old Testament. In fact, both ideas are wrong, as one would hope would have been obvious to the student who has followed the teachings in this book thus far. Man's relationship with the planet Earth stretches back for many, many years, and his reasons for being here are greatly different from that proposed by Christians, Jews, and Muslims. It is frustrating when we know that the information now being expanded was made available to scribes and storytellers long years ago, and yet that which comes down to us today in religious publications bears little or no connection with that original message, having been distorted by accident or by design. We trust that due to modern means of communication, this reprint of the story will never again be subject to amendment, but will always remain in its virgin form. Then, further revelations may be made advancing the knowledge of mankind about himself and the planes upon which he operates, instead of always having to return to basics and repair the damage in basic concepts perpetrated by mistake or fraud. Darwin may be forgiven for his mistakes. He studied the animal and plant kingdoms with the only tools at his disposal, the five senses, and from his observations he drew what conclusions he could. However, as has now been made clear, the five senses are merely a small part of the arsenal of measuring and quantifying abilities that God provides man with, and that by using these other senses one can observe action taking place in areas unknown to Darwin. He merely observed the results of the manipulation of matter occurring in camera and so drew his conclusions. That those theories are still expounded in schools, colleges and universities today is, of course, an indictment of the insensitivity of those who teach. There should, from now on, be no excuse for teaching the youth of today, destined to become the teachers of tomorrow, theories that are not actually correct. It is beholden upon the teachers today to achieve the necessary soul growth themselves to understand that the information contained within the publications to be made available is both true and a complete package sufficient for the moral, spiritual and intellectual growth of all students. We are, in fact, proposing that teacher training colleges have a basis of spirituality, that, as well as training would-be teachers in the techniques of passing on information alone, that they should also be given a thorough grounding in meditative and prayer techniques, and that certificates of competency should not be distributed until each teacher has demonstrated that he has acquired a degree of wisdom as defined within the term soul growth. We feel that such a day is at the moment far off, especially in countries where the education system is in the hands of and under the jurisdiction of individuals who have banded together to form an atmosphere designed to spread corruption amongst the youth of today. We find it deeply saddening that the future of many millions of youngsters is controlled by such people and although those corrupt individuals will pay a heavy price for their sins, nevertheless, there are generations of youngsters who reach manhood with no ability 
to communicate on any meaningful level, whether by the spoken or by the written word, who have no ideas of the basis of brotherliness that all men naturally seek, and who feel no sense of respect for themselves or for their fellow man. The results are all around for all to see. A breakdown in moral values, the collapse of law and order, physical abuse of self and others by drug-taking and by violence and a feeling of being lost. It must be very sad to be a young person being brought up in such a society where there is such an abundance of physical effects and such a paucity of spiritual guidance. We appeal to all who can help reverse the situation to do so. Teach all who will listen of the correct way to live. Appeal to your friends to join with you in setting up non-denominational prayer and meditation groups. Spread what light you can by your example of godliness. It is unfair that those malign ones should wreck your lives, the lives of your children and of your grandchildren, which is their hope. It is up to each individual to use the power of prayer in peace and in love to change the situation. We look forward to the day when schools will be established teaching correct moral and spiritual attitudes. We look forward to the day when parents reassume their duties as mentors to their offspring, duty which has been taken over by the state in some countries, and we look forward to the time when people can be elected to Parliament and the Senate to areas of political importance throughout the world, and for those so elected to act in an honourable spiritual manner truly representing the best interest of the constituents in a manner quite unlike today. Does all this seem pie in the sky? It does at the moment, which gives you some idea of the strides made by the fallen ones. Do not suppose that you are powerless to remedy the situation. Providing, as was mentioned earlier, you are of strong character, you will flourish enormously under the mighty influx of prayer, and if you can find two or three like souls, then act as Jesus begged 2,000 years ago, and bring the kingdom of God to the children of the earth, children of all ages now. We who dictate this information can only help to a limited extent. Our earthly lives have long since finished, but we feel great concern for the mass incarnate and awaiting incarnation. It is an abomination to see such hopeful, bright-eyed souls born on earth, expecting, quite rightly, to advance towards God during their earthly stay, and to see them much later as they give up their mortal coil, lost and disillusioned, and battered from the dreadful forces of maliciousness that play round them from the moment of birth to the moment of their release. We feel great anger that such time, energy and effort is wasted by the relatively few evil ones who control your lands and deny to all the knowledge and love, the freedom and happiness that is your birthright. This situation will continue until you as an individual and you as a mass take control of your own lives and thereby put yourself in a position to bring freedom to those enslaved individuals. Do not think that you can achieve oneness with God and live a life in happiness in isolation from the suffering of your fellow man. Oneness with God implies oneness with all, and your happiness will be tarnished by the sorrow of the suffering masses. Seek God in the peace of your heart and in the quiet of your home. Seek out like souls and form small, dedicated prayer groups. As and when you feel the strength, set up churches to teach the real truth of God. Set up Sunday schools. 
establish with those qualified teachers who are at one with you after hours schools teaching basic education and communication. Ensure that each pupil knows by your example and through your teaching the truth of his relationship with God and so gradually alter the way that your community lives. As these youngsters grow to maturity and have families of their own, encourage them to teach the correct domestic relationship between parent and offspring, parent, offspring and God, and so establish a society that you will look back on with pride and pleasure when your turn comes to reach the spiritual realms. But we warn you always to be wary of the fallen ones. They often occupy positions of authority and power in local and central government. They may be found amongst the dignitaries of churches and they will occupy the authoritative positions in education groups. Often they do not realize that they are used by the forces of evil. They are usually not evil themselves. But because their souls sleep, they are made use of by malign forces. They are successful and occupy top jobs because, in the degree that they lack spirituality, they are of the earth, and being at home in an earthly environment, they are at one with and able to manipulate earthly concepts to their own advantage. Thus, they graduate into top jobs and to positions where the evil that flows unconsciously from their lips and their pens spreads dismay, despondency and mayhem throughout the world. Be warned that as you set up prayer groups and attempt to alter the path that they have mapped out for the masses to follow, that they will react instinctively and with violence. You will be condemned by local and central government politicians and by leaders of churches. You will be accused by leaders of education authorities, of medical boards and of those of any area that you encroach upon. Having been forewarned, make sure that you are forearmed. Play the game by their rules. Make sure that you are on safe ground legally before you act, or they will condemn you and break up your organization. It is strange to think that, according to the Bible, the Egyptians tried to destroy the Hebrews, the Hebrews and the Romans tried to destroy the Christians, and now it is suggested that the Christians will try to destroy you. This gives you some idea of the power of evil and how beautiful concepts such as the teachings of Christ could be corrupted by evil. And yet, in the year that this book is being written, we find that the home of Christianity, the Catholic Church, is being rocked by allegations of corruption and by links with the Mafia. Does this surprise you? Well, if you have accepted the information concerning the power of evil given earlier, it shouldn't. It is almost inevitable that such events happened. It has happened because the organization begun by Christ was changed from simple prayer groups and people serving mankind, godly concepts, into a vast organization which exists in its own right, completely divorced from and outside of the concepts of Christ. Perhaps one day the Catholic Church will open its doors to all comers, will sell their vast treasure and give to the poor, and will follow Christ once again. But we do not wait for them to change. We must set up organizations in the spirit of Christ and of God. Beware of any member of your organization suggesting that you become a religion. Christ's relationship was with God direct. Your relationship is with God direct. You must not set up any organization that purports to worship God through anything or anybody. The Christians have gone astray by placing Christ with God.
put Christ as an intermediary between man and God. This is incorrect. Christ was and is as you. He is from God and is on a path to God. He is much further along the path, but nevertheless, he is still striving as you are. He did not see himself as an intermediary. Indeed, he exalted all to pray direct to God. The prayer he wrote, the Lord's Prayer, begins, Our Father who art in heaven. Not his Father, but our Father. He makes clear his oneness with you and his deference to God. He recognizes that he is still separated from God and yet recognizes God as his creator as he recognizes God as your creator. Therefore, do not create religions. Should you do so, you will place a false barrier between yourself and God and presently you will create priests to mediate between that mediator and you. So, God will gradually become more and more remote. False teaching will creep in to protect the right of priests to act as mediators and to justify why man must not pray direct to God. Money will be collected to pay their salaries and to provide them with the splendid apparel and homes that their positions as mediators between man and God concepts require. And once again, we are back on the path to chaos that all established religions are on. The key to salvation is sincerity of purpose, of simplicity, and of allowing all men the freedom to be at one with God. Do not establish religions, do not wear strange garments, do not perform any ritual. God is not impressed with silken robes hung with gold and jewels. He is impressed with honesty and sincerity of purpose. You might fool a gullible public by speaking in Latin or Hebrew, by swinging incense, by bowing and scraping, and by ringing bells, but God is not impressed. He would be impressed if you would assist your fellow man to meditate and to find God for himself. He would be impressed if those robes, jewels, gold and silver were turned into money to feed a starving native of some country where man has not had the intelligence to provide irrigation, etc. So we beg you, always keep your faith simple. Those experiences that you have and which mean so much to you might help others, but they might be meaningless to others. The prayer that you find so effective in opening your heart to divine influence might be useless to another. All men are different, and all men will develop their path to salvation independently. So freedom is the key word. Allow each and every one the freedom to develop the path to God that they must do and allow them to develop at their own speed. Providing you provide the environment in home, in employment and in education, as was mentioned earlier, do not try to control the path and the thoughts of the individuals as they develop their relationship with God. You will if you consider for a moment, merely be used by the forces of evil should you try to control the thoughts of others. For that is exactly what the politicians, church leaders and all those used by the power of evil try to do. We wish you luck in your newfound freedom. We wish you luck in the path that you will now follow and we ask you to remember that you are never alone. The power of God is always and ever present, as is advice from the White Brotherhood, which will continue to monitor progress and offer advice. Never think that you are isolated from the power of good. It is closer than your skin, nearer than thought, and always and ever present to assist you in your task. We seal you in the name of Almighty God and send you out into the byways and highways to complete the work started by Jesus and his disciples.
That is the end of chapter 9.